This lesson is all about oestrus synchronization. So last time we talked about all the different phases of oestrus, and today we're going to talk about how oestrus can actually be manipulated in such a way that all cattle uh, or all cows that go into oestrus go into oestrus at the same time. So basically what synchronization here means is treating many female animals, in this case we're going to look at cows, with hormones so that all reach the oestrus phase at the same time. So the main thing that oestrus synchronization actually does is to delay oestrus from happening. So if you've got uh, some cows that are in the meta oestrus phase or some in the di oestrus phase, which is the last phase, and you want them to eventually get to oestrus, but you want them all to get there at the same time, basically what the hormone treatment does is ensure that all the animals stay pro oestrus as the first phase and they don't go past pro oestrus so meaning what it does is the hormone treatment uh, allows the follicle to mature until it becomes the graphene follicle but it stops ovulation from happening so the graphene follicle kind of stays there in stasis it stays the same way until the hormones are taken away or a uh, I'm going to say an anti-hormone is put in, a different hormone, to stimulate ov ovulation. So this is to get all the animals to eventually get to oestrus all at the same time. Okay, so why? So why is this so important for some farmers? Not all farmers do it, but mainly your um, large breeders, the stud breeders, they do this because it aids um, artificial insemination, which is again, again a, a natural way of allowing the animals to become fertilized, so when humans fertilize an animal. So it helps with artificial insemination and basically the management of artificial insemination, meaning all the animals can then be mated at the same time or the farmer can inseminate the cows all at the same time. So with the management, this also means that the cows will be pregnant at the same time. Most of them will give birth at the same time. And all these young calves that they will then be born will be the same age. You can handle them and manage them all at the same time as well. So basically, synchronizing oestrus and then allowing artificial simulation to happen, or even if you don't do it that way, but you do it in a natural way, it ensures that mating and everything all happens at the same time. So for the farmer, this is a very good thing, meaning all these cows go through the same process and the same phase of pregnancy and so on, all at the same time, it allows him to manage the animals all at the same time much easier. So it actually leaves some labor and also lessens some costs associated with managing the farm. Okay, so some methods they can use to actually synchronize oestrus. The first one is called intravaginal implants. What they do is they release these hormones into the cow to basically um, delay ovulation from happening. So here at the bottom, we've got two of these implants. This literally goes into the vagina of the cow and it releases this, this one as well. It releases these hormones to then prevent the graphene follicle from releasing its, its XL, the ovum. Okay, so now the second possibility is hormone injections. So here at the side, we have a big injection needle with some hormones. So basically the animal or the cow can just be injected with these hormones that delays ovulation. Then thirdly, what they sometimes do is a combination of the two. So they can both use the implant and the injections. It seems kind of excessive, but this is usually your safest bet because then you know that the animal or the cow does have enough of these hormones in her body and ovulation will not happen. So it depends on the farmer, it depends on the cow, which of these two methods they're going to use and whether they are going to use a combination of the two. Okay, so then we have to look at some advantages of synchronized oestrus as long as your um, disadvantages. So some advantages is usually for artificial insemination, it can happen at the same time, like I just discussed. And then secondly, it also simplifies the management. So many, all the progeny, all the calves will be the same age. So again, they can all be dewormed de at the same time, dehorned at the same time. They can all grow up together, be held in the same camp, maybe. So the man management for the farmer is just so much better. And thirdly, for embryo transplantation, we're going to look at this later in the next video. So for embryo transplantation, it can also occur at the same time. So basically, em embryo transplantation in a nutshell 
is basically when you have a pregnant cow, but then that embryo, the developing embryo before it becomes a fetus, is actually taken out of this cow's body and then placed into another cow so that she becomes pregnant. Why would they want to do this? To allow the first cow that was pregnant with the embryo to become pregnant again, because many of these times that individual is genetically more superior and they actually want this cow to have as much babies as possible. So then they put the embryo into a surrogate mother, or, um, a different mother. She carries the embryo, but then at the same time, the other one that you want to be pregnant can become pregnant again. And then last, it also saves insemination and this type of transplantation costs because then all the cows can be done at the same time. Okay, so now there's some disadvantages of synchronized oestrus. So again, the process is time consuming and very, very laborious. So again, if you have like a thousand cows and all of them have to be synchronized at the same time, it is going to be time consuming to do all of them and you will have to have some workers to help you do it. And secondly, uh, synchronization of hormones are very, very expensive or with hormones. It's an expensive process. So again, most of your stud breeders do this, not really your commercial farmers or small scale farmers. You have to have money to do this. And thirdly, veterinary costs, again, are expensive because a vet has to do this. You can't do this on your own. You must be licensed to actually do, uh, insert these implants and also do the injections of the cows. Then lastly, heat detection, we talked about in the last lesson, can sometimes be missed. So meaning when the animals eventually then goes into oestrus, when um, synchronization is stopped, meaning the, the hormone treatment is counteracted and stopped, and all the cattle are allowed to go into oestrus at the same time, um, it must be detected whether they actually go into heat and then go in, then actually ovulate. And some animals, again, if there's like a thousand of them, can be missed. And this means it's a wasted opportunity because, again, you wasted money or the farmer wasted money to actually synchronize all these cattle. So when there are some of them are missed, um, you'll have to wait for the next time that the animal goes through the cycle, the oestrus cycle, which means this particular cow then will not be synchronized with the rest of the cattle. So they must be monitored very, very closely and see, see whether they actually go into heat. Okay, so now we have to really talk about, as with we did with bulls, infertility versus sterility, but specifically in cows. So again, infertility means the cow does produce egg cells and fertilization does occur. So she was mated with and, and the sperm cell um, is there and it gets fertilized. But for some reason, the embryos fail to develop. So meaning this cow does not carry a calf or if she has an embryo and is starting to develop into a young calf or fetus. For some reason, she can abort it or it doesn't develop. So again, she does have egg cells, but a young calf does not develop. Then sterilities. The cow does not produce any egg cells or ovulates. Um, again, preventing fertilization. So even if she's mated with, there's sperm in her, there is an egg cell to start with, or maybe there is an egg cell, the young ovum, developing in the follicle but for some reason ovulation does not happen. So again, you guys must know the difference between in infertility and sterility. Okay, so then we have to look at the causes, specifically here of infertility in cows. So firstly, some diseases can affect the reproductive organs. So mainly whether it's the uterus, the endometrium lining, any of those areas, because again, we said infertility, the cow does produce egg cells and ovulation does occur. But for some reason, um, the young calf is not developing. So some diseases can affect the, the other reproductive organs like your uterus, preventing the young fetus from developing. Then something very interesting, hypoplasia. This actually happens with bulls as well. So hypo means under and it means under development, specifically of the reproductive organs. So in this case, maybe the uterus is too small or maybe the endometrium lining has never developed. Something is wrong with this cow's reproductive organs, meaning the egg cell can't eventually, or fertilized egg cell cannot develop. So hypo means under, and plagia usually in this case means development, so under development. Then thirdly, double cervix canal. This is literally when the cow, if you guys remember, has sketched of the cervix, it's just one um, very narrow tunnel 
way through, um, but it's, that connects to the uterus, where the sperm has to swim through. And so, sometimes some of the cows have developed two of these canals. So the one does go to the uterus, but the other canal ends blindly, so it just stops. The meaning if the cow is fertilized and the sperm cells go through the cervix, some of go, them go down this canal that stops in, into a blind spot, like a dead end. So then again, wasted sperm, no fertilization, meaning no calf development. Then fourthly, a vaginal prolapse can happen. So what this re usually refers to is all the insides, the uterus, the cervix, the um, vagina, and so on. The insides usually come outside the body, and then it is susceptible to infections. So a prolapse literally means everything, all the intestines on the inside, or the, in this case, the reproductive organs. When the calf is born or during pregnancy, everything that's inside can go outside the animal's body. So usually this doesn't cause the death of the cow, but again, she can get a very serious infection of the area when this happens, then causing abortion and so on. And also, overfeeding of the animal can actually be bad because what happens is usually there are fat, fat deposits, a lot of fat, in the birth canal. So when birthing does actually happen, the birthing process, the calf can get stuck on the inside of her reproductive organs or inside the vagina. So then again, this also leads to abortions or the calf is born dead. Okay, then lastly, high estrogen levels in your pasture lands. And this can also lead to abortions because again, estrogen actually stops pregnancy. So estrogen is one of those counteractive hormones. Okay, so again, this is very bad for the environment. So farmers have to make sure that whatever felt and pasture the, the cow is actually eating a pregnant cow does not have a lot of estrogen. Certain types of plants um, have high estrogen levels. So whatever grass type she's eating while she's pregnant should not have a lot of estrogen, estrogen inside. Okay, and then lastly, the causes of sterility in cows. So again, something that's wrong here, sterility, the cow is not producing any egg cells or ovulation is not happening. Okay, so firstly, some diseases can affect the reproductive organs, specifically the ovaries and the fallopian tubes, preventing the egg cell from being released or the production of egg cells. Uh, secondly, of the, the issue can be an oestrus. So an oestrus means there is no oestrus happening. So meaning this animal does not go into heat. The bull never services her. Something goes wrong. So for some reason, she either doesn't ovulate or she doesn't go into heat telling the bull that he can mate with her. Then thirdly, the defective ovulation. There are some different things causing defective ovulation, meaning it doesn't happen, or when it does happen, something goes wrong. So in this case, the parentheses are said cystic ovaries. So what happens in this case, you've got your grafting follicle, it's mature, but for some reason, the follicle is not um, rupturing, so the egg cell is not released, and this can cause a cyst forming. So literally, the egg cell in the follicle becomes thick and cyst-like, almost like a tumor. So then it can actually cause, again, harm to the cow because no egg cells being released and it can cause inflammation and she can become sterile either temporarily or permanently because of this cyst, cyst forming in the ovary. Okay, then fourthly, hyperplasia, same thing we talked about in the previous one, underdevelopment of reproductive organs, here specifically of the ovaries. So the ovaries are underdeveloped, meaning no egg cells will be produced. Here's something very interesting. So talk about a hermaphrodite. So some cows are actually hermaphroditic, meaning they've got both male and female reproductive organs. So again, except for this identity crisis of the cow, they've got both male and female reproductive organs, meaning they compete for space. So again, is there really going to be an egg cell produced? Are the ovaries fully developed? Maybe the ovaries are underdeveloped because now again, they've got some levels of testosterone in their bodies. So again, usually your hermaphrodites, they are not, they are not reproductive, um, they can't reproduce. So usually they're infertile, or in this case sterile, meaning no, no egg cells, no sperm cells, nothing. Then also you've got something very interesting called a free marten. So the free marten name refers also to a cow. So usually these cows have underdeveloped reproductive organs, but the reason, and here I put in a picture, is usually what happens a free marten, uh, is a female, but she she had a twin. So when she was developing in her mother's womb, she had a twin brother. So usually it's, it's twins of a male and a female. 
And what happens is their blood usually mixes during development. So this means the males have testosterone, females estrogen. So in this case, because their blood mixed, their hormones also mixed, and the female comes into contact with testosterone. And because of this, again, she doesn't have enough estrogen levels, vice versa as well, he doesn't have enough testosterone levels. So he becomes infertile or sterile, and she becomes sterile because no egg cells can produce now. That's because she became, or she came into contact with testosterone from her, her brother. So a free martin is a sterile female because she was one of a twin, and she came into contact with testosterone. Okay, so again, they're sterile, they can't have can't produce any offspring. Then also they can become sterile because of overfeeding. So in this case fat deposits around the ovaries itself. So again the ovaries are underdeveloped or they struggle to produce the egg cell because of all the fat. And also underfeeding can lead to underdevelopment of either the ovaries or any other of the reproductive organs. So again here management is very important. So both overfeeding and underfeeding is bad for the cow. And then lastly, again, high estrogen levels in the pastures. So again, it can lead to, in this case, to cystic ovaries as well. So again, the estrogen then prevents ovulation from happening. So again, high estrogen levels is very, very bad for the reproductive um, system of um, cows. So yes, that is basically it for this lesson.